All right, our friends from Tilton helped us out again. Here again, we got a company we've been using their products for years on all our builds, so it only made sense to use it on our own build. Uh, brake and clutch pedal assembly. We got our master cylinders down here. Three master cylinders, one for the front, one for the rear, and then one for the clutch. Uh, that'll also all be controlled, um, adjustable proportioning valve within the pedals for the brakes. And then what's really cool is they have their accelerator pedal that can be used for either lever or cable driven or throttle by wire, which is what we're going to be doing. That's really cool. Usually we got to make this stuff and it takes forever to make this stuff. So it's really cool we got something to work with to start with. It's going to save a lot of time. Uh, great product. We love Tilton and uh, really looking forward to seeing this stuff on the car. We're working on the windshield today. We don't actually have the windshield ready uh, in our hands yet. Still working on windows. It's like the never ending job pretty much. Working on the rear glass right now. So we made our pattern out of tag board, pretty standard. Kind of wraps around the back here. Uh, the, the pattern fits pretty well. We got a couple gappy spots. And when I say gaps, it's like a 16th of an inch. So. I could fill those, but seeing how I've done this numerous times, I kind of have my own method of just kind of marking it on the pattern here. So now that we got our pattern, and you know, again, this is a pattern. It doesn't need to be mint. If, if you understand it, if you know what to do with it, transfer it to your material. You don't need to spend all day on your pattern. But we do want it to turn out very nice in the end game. So if you need your pattern mint, make your pattern mint. All right, here's our, <clears throat> here's our Lexon. Now I already put a straight edge on the car and I found out that this bottom is actually really straight up until about this point here. So I'm actually gonna use the edge of the Lexon cause it's so straight. And I'm gonna use a fatty, not a Sharpie. So basically a, a Sharpie that's fat. Oh, okay, we'll start over on that. So we're using a fatty, not a Sharpie. So an old Sharpie that's worn down and now fat. So we know our pattern needs a little extra and we can just kind of compensate for that. We're gonna cut this out bigger than what we need and sand it down to size. All right, so now we got our line. Our line's about an eighth inch wide. Now I'm gonna take the saw and actually cut on the outside of that line. So that's gonna give us an extra eighth inch, maybe 3 16 all the way around. And that's really all the extra material we need. Anything beyond that is just more work. But if you're doing it for the first time, you know, you can definitely take it in stages if you're not sure. Lexon's not super expensive. Labor is. So <clears throat> we can always get more Lexon if need be. We're going to take this over to the saw now and trim it down. You can see we got the saw set up. Now we just put this cardboard down so we don't scratch this Lexon at all. It does have a protective masking on it already, but just to be extra careful, we got the cardboard on, we got our Lexon blade, which is just a more aggressive blade than we would normally use, and the saw's all set up. So being this a bigger piece, you know, grab a friend or whoever to take the end, make sure when they're holding the end, they're not controlling the piece, they're just lifting it up. All right, we can go about this a couple different ways. You could, you could come in an eighth of an inch to your line and cut all the way around it. Or if you're feeling like you're pretty right on that day, you could go right up to where you're gonna cut. I'm gonna try to go right up to my cut mark. It is sometimes difficult when you have all this extra material. So we'll just see how it goes and I'll adjust it from there.
right? So we're pretty much all rough cut it out. Uh, my marker line wasn't as straight as I wanted it to be, but I just kind of corrected that with the saw cut. And you can see the saw cut's not, it's not perfect, it's not right on, but it doesn't need to be. That's where sanding it down comes to. Right now, we just needed that extra eighth inch, three sixteenths of material, and, and we got it. And we didn't damage anything. So let's go put it on the car and see how it looks. All right, we got our window. So I'm just going to go around all the edges, see if there's any problem areas. If we got one low spot, like we do here, we got an actual gap there, then this whole thing has to come down. The whole window has to come down so that we don't have a gap there. And that's what I want to do. I want to fit this bottom edge before I do the other three sides. That way it can kind of sit in there and then it'll just kind of like pop into place. What we're going to do is we're going to fit this bottom edge and we'll use our, our Clecos to hold it in place. And we can actually take it and just pull it out a little bit and sand on it and try it trial fit it again. So we're not actually taking it off every time. That'll save us a lot of time. All right, so we're just gonna basically use two tools to fit this window into place. Our 90 degree angle grinder brought to you by 3M. Uh, that's gonna just take the bulk of material and then we'll just use a regular sanding block like you would for body work to just kind of fine tune it. Uh, this takes off a lot more material than you think. It doesn't take long to make this thing small. So I'm just going to start working it. So I know I said we're going to work this bottom edge first, but I guess in reality I'm working this, this edge I want to make sure we're all the way forward and then I'll, I'll start working on that. Just kind of getting a feel for it as you would with any other kind of material. This is the biggest gap here, and we're tight up on top. So I'm trying to close that by taking material off the top here. So it goes really quick. You gotta be careful not to go too far. All right, you can see our our gap's getting pretty close. It's not super even yet, but it, it's getting right in there. Now, what you do need to consider is the thickness of paint. Still has to go in there. <clears throat> you don't want to make your window too big. Once the car is painted, it doesn't fit in there. Uh, so I'm moving away from the 90 degree sander and I'm just gonna start using the block. This is gonna help me make it straight and then just kind of fine tune it. Now, you may have seen certain cars in the past where their windows blew out once they got to a certain mile per hour. Okay, there's a reason for that. If air is getting into the car, it's gotta come out somewhere. So, either you make a car that's nice and sealed up like we are, or for the rest of everyone, put exiting holes in the back so the air can get out. Um, outside of this flange, this side window shouldn't need any more support. Um, there are people that might put like vertical supports and maybe a couple more screws, but really being as short as this is, uh, this will be plenty rigid. Plus this is 3 16 not eighth inch, so it's even thicker than we really even need to go. Uh, th so that's basically how it's going to be fastened in. It's kind of a process of just, just sanding and massaging it and We'll start drilling in a couple holes to hold it in and while we're working the whole piece, 
So that's going to basically be how it goes from here on out. Uh, you know, if we showed you the whole process, you'd probably fall asleep after about an hour. All right, so we got, we got kind of two options. We can see if we can just force it in with our, with our screws, but there will always be stress on here, and it might lead to little stress cracks around the screws later on, but maybe not. It just depends, and you don't really know until until you got it fit and it's in place. So the other option is try to mold this material into shape. It's, it's really tricky to do. You can't use too much heat and you can't use too little heat. So we're gonna just take some of our scraps and kind of test it with the heat gun just to see if, if it's something we wanna try doing or not. Now, the problem is we might get this whole thing fit in here and all the screws drilled and countersunk and a thing mint and we go to try to heat this up and we, we could screw it up and then we gotta make a new sheet. So we're just gonna take some of the scraps now and see if it's, if it's worth trying. So let's give that a try. <laughs> 